And today, I've got Doug Bobst. Is it Bobst? Yes, sir. Doug Bobst. He's a personal trainer, author, speaker, podcast host. Out of those, what do you think you're most known for? Probably being a trainer. Really? Well, yeah, it's been it's it's been what I've been doing the longest. I've been a trainer for almost eleven years. Yeah, but dude, you're a podcast host. Yeah, but that, I guess that in, must mean like how many people listen to it? Two? How many people have you trained? I've trained a lot of people, and a lot of people listen to my podcast. I guess I just look at it through experience. Like, well, I'm talking about the, like your reach. The podcast has more reach than people you've trained. Like, w- what do you mean trained? How do you train people? Well, I mean, have it's you all- trained thousands of people? No, probably not. I mean, okay. I've trained hundreds of people. Well, podcast, you don't think thousands of people have heard it? No, thousands of people have, but I would say what most people have known me for, for that know me, I guess, personally now would be just through I'm training. talking about the world. Yeah, I guess podcasting and just my story and what I've, how I turned such a horrible moment in my life into something positive, and it was all a result of the choices that I made. And you wrote a book? couple what's it called so i wrote three the first one was from felony to fitness to free that's it and then faith family fitness and then i wrote the heart of recovery now we're going to go over your story in just a moment but personal trainer so you actively train people at the gym yeah what do you charge for that uh it depends on the session but roughly a hundred dollars an hour so what if someone books you up for 10 hours a day? I can't, I don't do that anymore. See, my, my business has changed to where now, since the podcast is, is, is making some money, I'm not training as much as I used to. Well, when do you train? How many hours a day? I probably do like three or four sessions a day. So that it, it, at a hundred a session? Yeah. So that means you can only make three or 400 a day. Training. Yeah. But you know, the podcast generates some money too. So that helps. I know, but why not just stop that shit? Uh, I mean, cause I think for me now with where I'm at with the show, it's not as guaranteed. The income isn't as guaranteed, right? That's the goal is to eventually go full force into podcasting, into speaking, into that world. But I also don't want to just quit a hundred percent without having guaranteed income coming in. How many people bought your book from felony to fitness? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I know collectively about a thousand people bought the three books total. I mean, I'm a lousy, I was a lousy marketer when I first wrote it. Are you good now? I'm better. Why don't you re- relaunch it? That's what I'm doing. I'm in the middle of rewriting from felony to fitness to free. Cause that got published in 2014. So, so much has happened in the last seven years that's changed that I want to add into the book. Who taught you how to write a book back then? Like, who told you, hey, you should write a book about all this? Um, I was in a mastermind, and a mentor of mine was like, you know, you got a cool story. You, sh- you should put it in a book. And I was just like, I barely graduated high school. Who Did you was- hire a ghostwriter or write it yourself? Initially, I was going to hire a ghostwriter. And and then after telling my story to the ghostwriter and then her writing some of the chapters, I was like, this sucks. I was like, I can write my story better. And if anybody's going to write it, it's got to be me. And and honestly, as soon as I started to, to, to put it out there and started to, to flow with it, it, it became so easy. Um, but, you know, I wasn't as polished of a writer back then. So I look back and some of the things I said, like, I mean, I, I for instance, when I- That was, was book number one. It was book number one. Shit. By book number two, you realized, shit, I didn't know nothing at book number one. <laughs> No, Dude, and, and people, most people yeah. never get one book. Right, you're already up to three. Which one do you think is your favorite book? I would say the first one, um, because that was super. It was a confidence builder for me, um, because come and in, in that moment, I was I had such a fixed mindset around personal development in the sense that I was like, well, I'm not a writer, so who, who who's going to read my book? Or I don't deserve to write a book. Or, I barely graduated high school, and and me just you know I stopped complaining about it. And I just did it. The level of growth that came from that, I think, just transpired into and translated into other areas of my life as well. Folks, this guy's got a podcast as well, The Adversity Advantage. Was I on that? You said I was on that. Yeah. How long ago? A few months, and you were grilling me. It was fun. It was a fun. People loved it. I had people DMing me that listened to it four, five, six times. Did I rib you? A little bit. We, We got into the subject of loneliness, and I was like, we were talking about, I think, like dropping friends and people were afraid of, 
of being lonely and um, and you were like, I feel like the host asked me questions based on what he is struggling with. And you were like, are you lonely? And you kept messing with me. And, um, <laughs> and it was funny because I was genuinely trying to get a, a real answer. I mean, I'm out here in Vegas by myself, so I obviously I don't have a problem yeah, being lonely. Yeah, but still, dude, that psychological shit I was throwing on you. It was. Yeah, because usually when, when a host asks questions, why are they asking those questions? Like, I can ask you anything I want. Why would I ask you about loneliness? Unless, yeah. unless you're some sort of fucking loneliness expert. No. Yeah, I get, but that's the only reason I would. But that's my point. Right, so right. if I ask you about loneliness, which you must have asked me about, you know, what, do I th- what are my thoughts on loneliness? Well, I asked you, we were talking about like leaving people behind, like, like crappy people in your life. What's your answer to that? Like, how do you do that? No. How? You, no. People want to know how? We were talking about how to do it? We were talking about, I asked you like, how, how did you, how do you break... How do you break away from... Dude, what do you mean how, though? Like, how? You just fucking decide. No, I know that. Like, right, I, right, right now, if I said, man, I wanna, I'm going to stop this fucking show right now. I go, fuck, I'm done with this show. Click, and I walk out. And then you, you walk around going, what the fuck just happened? But realistically, that's how you do anything. It's you just fucking decide. Oh, I agree with you, and I, I believe that as well. But there's a, I'm, what I, the reason I ask is because there's a lot of people that, that don't do that. Right? What do they do? What do they do? They just pon- they just ponder around. They end up hanging around the same shitty people for the rest of their lives, and they're miserable because of certain reasons or certain tapes they're playing in their head over and over again. And one of the ones that I think, from what I've heard in the past from people, is that well, they're they're just addicted to being around people, whether they're good for them or bad for them. Yep. So, what's your story, bro? Ah. Let's hear your story. <laughs> well. Uh, you want me to just listen to your story, or do you want me to critique your story? Critique or, it, or, I, I, or, or do you want, or do you want me to, uh, like, look for any holes? Yeah, look. For, I mean, do what you think is best. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I, I guess you know. Before we we came in here and recorded, do you prepare for your podcast? By the way, when the guest comes on? No. Yeah. 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 For the most part, depends. Yeah, see, I don't, as you can see and tell, but. Do you like this refreshing back and forth where, yeah. where you don't know where it's going to go? Yeah. And that's kind of why I was a little, not nervous, but I was like uncertain. I was like, where, what's he going to ask me? Like, cause you know, I've heard, I listen to your podcast a lot and, well, and dude, I, when you're on someone's podcast, you're supposed to return the favor and say, I'll put you on mine. But usually, you know, someone's not doing 400 episodes, bang, 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 bang. So like I'll do five to 10 episodes of this and, I, and you know, I'm not remembering every single fucking conversation. Are you? How many episodes you got? A little over 150, I think. Okay, so you're starting to see what I mean. Yeah, yeah, sure. Because, dude, most people won't even get past 10 episodes. Right. Well, and... But when you start a podcast and you blow up the podcast, people, you know, start to like the personality of the host, how the host asks questions. It, mine's the opposite. People like the guest. They don't like the host. But that's what makes it fun for me. I think people like you though. No, no. Yeah, I was talking to everybody's a guy. against me. Doug. I was talking to a guy yesterday who's like a a friend, been a mentor of mine for a long time. Listens to your podcast, and and loves it, and loves you, and just he said that you're just so relatable in, the, in your delivery, and and he was just he was just saying that you just you get into the the nitty gritty of it. You know, there's no fluff. I keep it real. He keeps it real. You keep it real, and I think now, do you know why people should keep it real? I mean, I think people relate to 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 realness and others well that's one fact i can't argue with but i think when you're not being real i think it prevents you from being your best and being happy with yourself because well that's subjective okay but what will happen by not being real is you will attract people that shouldn't be around you Mm. You will attract energy you don't want around you. And by, by not being you, you literally will draw negative energy towards you. Do you want negative energy towards you or positive energy? Positive energy. Of course. Right. right? See how easy that is when you take away all the nonsense? Yeah. So someone's sitting there saying, how do I take away you know, bad shit, negative shit? How do I make my life better? Well, get rid of all negative energy. Well, what's negative energy? Anybody that's not for you. Right. Well, how do you identify those type of people? And then what do you do when you identify them? And then someone comes up and says, Doug, how do you get rid of them like that? What would you say? 
it's it, when once you're clear on your own identity and what you stand for and who you are, then it becomes really clear. So on, how do you, how would you do it? I mean, for me, it's I I I, I would write things down. You, you you write it down for them and hand them a note. Oh, I mean, I thought you meant like, how would I get, how would rid, you of, get rid of them? Oh, with, with the people in my life. I mean, I would just casually, there's some people where if something bad happened, bad? no, I mean, it, initially when I was younger, that was something that held me back was I was feeling bad for myself. If I let people go that had been in my life for five, 10 years. But then once I got clear on who I was and developed some self-confidence and some self-esteem, I realized <laughs> I was doing myself a disservice by keeping them in my life. And, and it, how long did it take you to realize that? Gosh, too long. Um, probably four or five years. How many times did you hear it before you finally decided it was real? Uh, probably. I mean, I heard it a lot. I mean, my parents growing up were like... What made you not listen the first time? Uh, honestly, I was... I was scared of being alone. Now I'm not lonely, but I'm saying back See, then. See, now what people might say is, is you're not afraid to be vulnerable. Right. See, now a lot of dudes will be like, dude, I ain't going to tell people I was tired of being alone. No one needs to know that. What, what brought you to the level of that's okay to tell somebody? I just knew that I wanted more for myself. And How? How? Because I started to treat myself differently. I started to take better care of myself. And then when I would be around certain people, we just didn't have anything in common anymore. And by the way, from felony to fitness, what felony were you charged of? I got busted selling a bunch of pot back in 2008. That's it? That's it. How much pot? Half a pound. That's it? That's crazy now, right? I mean, it's like I was in and a- you caught a felony for that? Caught a felony. See, dude, you know what the purpose of that was? To teach me a lesson. No. To weaken you. <laughs> That's a weakening thing because you can't own a gun. I can now. How can you now? Because the felony conviction came off my record. Felonies off my record now. Felonies don't come off records. It did. I took a plea with the, the judge. A condition? It was a condition. Well, then you got lucky, dude, because now you're back to normal. So most people don't get lucky like that. They get a felony, even if it's for a stupid half pound of weed. They get a felony. They're done when it comes to a gun. Their vote, in some cases, doesn't count anymore. So in my mind, it's, that's just the government's way of weakening a, a, a member of the, of the society that might be against government someday. Because like right now, all felons, they can't have weapons. They can't have guns. They can't have bullets. You know how many felons there are in this country? A lot. More than people think. Right. Because of stupid shit. Like you got caught with a half pound of weed. Fuck. You should have said it was for smoking. I mean, I, there was no way around that because they found a yes, couple. there was. There, they found cash. They found a scale. Well, that's the rest of the story. Yeah, I'm talking about right, right. So if I got caught with a half pound of weed, I'd be like, that's my personal <laughs> smoke, bro. I, I'm smoking all day. Yeah. But whatever. You got busted. How long ago was that? This uh, It'll be th um, 13 years Okay, so this has been over a long time. Yeah. When I mean, was your record expunged? Mm, January 2014, the felony conviction. So you're fresh, restored citizen. Came, came off my record, and, and it officially became completely expunged. Um, it was like last you month. You didn't get no tattoos in the can? <laughs> no, I got a tattoo right before I went to jail. Dude, did you go to the uh, uh, prison for it or no? County jail. For how long? 90-day sentence. Set, oh, but backing up, backing up five I gonna, years. I was going to laugh like, come on, man. I've been drunk longer than that. <laughs> but, you know, 90 days, nine days in jail is a fucking bitch. <clears throat> Would you agree? Yeah, and I guess especially because of my frame of mind. I was so timid. My self-esteem was in the shitter. I was scared. I was heavily Did addicted. Did you think you were going to get your ass kicked? Everything. And that's what I put in my first book. I talked about, like, how my writing wasn't as polished. I was like, I was afraid I was going to get all this stuff. Dude, one time I went to jail, and I was, I was in... I was sales man, a salesman. Uh, I was selling art yeah. at the time. So I went and got a manicure, and I told the person to buff the nails. And then that weekend I was out or whatever, I got a DUI, so I had to go to jail. Well, they keep you over if, you're at the, if you time it wrong, you know, and the judge isn't coming until Monday, so you have to stay in there a couple of days. And I was in jail with fucking a manicure. And, dude... By the, by the time the judge was ready to either hear my shit or whatever, 
I was told I was about to get jumped. And I said, for what? And they said, they think you're a cop because of your freaking manicure. And I'm like, well, number one, I didn't know cops got manicures. Second of all, don't bullshit me. They're like, dude, next time you go outside, you're getting freaking jumped. And, dude, I was scared shitless, dude. I didn't know who said it, but, dude, it's a they out there trying to get you. Did you feel that way? Um, Not directly, but indirectly, I just knew. I was the guy who always ran away from fights. So, like, when I was selling drugs. No, but you know what? Dude, that's the smart guy. Yeah, I guess. But as I look back, and while that is the smart thing, I the, the bigger – issue there is I was never I was always afraid of standing up for myself you know and, and that was what plagued me I think a lot in my younger <laughs> years so if I'm being honest I mean I'm being honest that's the only way to be yeah but that's what's funny is like so even though the important lesson is looking back and none of that shit mattered but you're saying yeah it did because like I was scared of fighting for myself whether it was well, for yourself for any reason yeah dude, it doesn't matter right like dude there's people that are f afraid to fight because of the the perceived and potential damages inflicted. And and what's funny is most of those damages never get inflicted because you anticipate a much sturdier ass whooping if you're thinking about it ahead of time. You see what I'm saying? Like if like me and you had to go get in a ring, you start thinking about how bad you're gonna I'm like I'm gonna hit hard and we just start thinking we're gonna get our asses kicked. Right. If you actually end up going and fighting, you don't get your ass kicked as bad as you thought you would. Well, I think the... That's what a fighter told me one day. Right. It was good advice because, again, he was right. Every time I anticipated getting in a fight, I thought, oh, dude, that son of a bitch is going to have precision uh, and strength, and my teeth are going to be missing here in about five seconds, when in reality, had we had a crystal ball and let that fight take place... Well, it's, that person didn't have precision. My teeth aren't gone. I didn't get my eye knocked out. But then again, there's a small percentage chance that you do fuck with the wrong person, and now you're you're literally maimed for life. So what's the real intelligent way? Well, you already picked it, dude. Right. You walked away. You were scared. <laughs> and yeah. now you let society make you feel like that was wrong. And there's people that are going to be watching this going, Brad, you're wrong. I, one time I said, I just said it as an example. Somebody slapped my girl's ass. I'm like, what the fuck? And he goes, I'll kill you. And so I said, you know, come on, honey. You know, let's get out of here. You know, and everyone's like, dude, you got to kill them when they do that. Technically, I understand as, as, as men especially, but as a macho bravado, you know, alpha male, you're not going to allow stupidity. Right. right? I, I it, heard you tell that story. And it doesn't yeah. matter of the consequences. And, and dude, I've text people, you know, I agree at the end of the day, I agree. Come up and do something to me or my fucking kids or my wife or something rude. I'm not going to go, come on, honey, you know, <laughs> but then again, I, I, I think certain things are worth an ass kicking it means you have to stand up for yourself at some point in time, but it's not necessarily about people's opinions. Like I'm not going to go get in fights because someone doesn't like me. Like, I don't give a fuck. Don't like me. But it wasn't just that. Like, I can, I understand, you're right. And I can understand what you're saying that, like, if everything else was cool and then I, my only thing was, yeah, I walked away from fights. Like, yeah, but it wasn't just that. I was afraid to ask girls out. I was afraid, like I said, to leave certain friend well, groups. Well, did you look like you do now? No. What would you look like? I was 50 pounds heavier than I am so you now. looked worse or better? <laughs> worse. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you looked worse back then? Yeah. All right. I, I'm trying to get a frame of reference wow. here. <laughs> Dude, normally people look worse in the future. You're 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 going backwards. I am. Well, I'm just going like back. I, to like that. Sometimes I, I go to a high school reunion. Not sometimes. I, I went to one, I think. 20 year, maybe. And uh, boy, some people didn't age as well, brother. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I saw some people, I was like, Time was not kind to you, you know, something, something weathered your teeth pretty good. You know, I don't know what happened in your life, but you know, you were gnawing on the wrong things. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was fat. like, their teeth oh, was yeah. fucking gone. Some of them had neck pillows, but there was nothing there <laughs> but skin. Um, and then there's some people that like work out, get in shape, freaking in the future, they're better people. So I'm glad to see you were one of them. Yeah, I was a fat kid growing up. Okay. I was unathletic. But I you was... were afraid to talk to girls, maybe warranted. Right. 
Right. And so in my head, that was the story that played. And I was like, yeah, because I was yeah, attracted. But you didn't know, dude, back in those days, yeah. all you would have had to do is even fake confidence and and almost like brush them aside and they would have came running. Right. I know. I didn't date, them, date them like you hate them. Treat them like you don't need them. <laughs> that was the high school rules. I guess I was so insecure back then because of how I treated myself that I felt that I had to do the opposite. And almost like win him over by being super nice. And I know that that's not the way to you do it. You were the nice guy. Right. I was the Dude, nice guy. Don't fat you kid. know nice guys don't finish last? <laughs> or they do? They do, I think, in many cases. What do you believe? Um, I, I think you have to be kind, but you can't be a pushover either, right? Well, I agree with that. But who do you think fin th thinks finishes last? Nice guys or dickheads? Uh, I think over time, probably dickheads. Of course they do. That's why when you hear these sayings, Doug, people shouldn't believe all the sayings that you hear. Right. You know, nice guys finish last. Who says that fucking bullshit's true? That's not true. I'm a nice guy. I'm not last. Are you a nice guy? I am. Are you last? No. Well, then fucking why would they say that? I, don't, I think it's like a mosh. No, it's somebody trying to fucking justify getting fucked over by somebody. You know, well, nice guys finish last. Bullshit. Nice guys don't finish last, fool. Don't let that shit bother you is the point, Doug. And I think the, the, what happens, though, too, is when people are too nice to other people and they are not comfortable with themselves, they they end up losing track of, like, like what matters to them because they're, they're constantly trying to please other people. They're constantly trying to get other people to like them to fit in, and that's what I did back then when's back then when i was addicted to opiates and addicted to coke and selling drugs like i was doing whatever i could to fit in with the cool crowd and because dude, i can picture you back in those days probably yeah <laughs> you were probably fucking doug you could always get something from doug did you ever like you know sell the coke i did yeah so I you mean, just didn't get caught for it right and if you never got caught for the half pound you wouldn't be a felon that's true doesn't make you not a felon does it nah. nope no. It just means you didn't get caught. You're a felon that didn't get caught. That's why when people try to put down people with felonies, I always say, dude, look, you're a fucking felon more than likely too. Right. You just haven't been caught. So it makes you a smarter felon or a more lucky felon, but you're a fucking felon too. How do we know? Because there's laws out there, dude, that you don't even know you're breaking. And right. it doesn't matter that you don't know. Right. I mean, I heard something and I was in church a few years ago and this was right around I forget what the incident, but he said, imagine if the worst 30 seconds of your life was plastered for millions of people to see. Somebody had just gotten got caught doing something bad and it was all over the media and everyone was hating on it. He was like, just imagine like the worst 30 seconds of your life. And it definitely put things into perspective for, for not just me, but I think for a lot of people in the church, because they're like, oh shit, I don't, I don't want people to know like what I've been doing behind closed doors, like five, six, seven years ago or yesterday or whatever. And, and you're right. You know, because there's a lot of people out there that they'll judge somebody for being a convicted felon, and yet they're doing similar things. They just haven't gotten caught. Great point. Yeah. I mean, and I think self-confidence is so important, man. And when I was younger, I, I felt like I was only making the choices based on how I felt about myself at that time. Like, I, I feel like people's external world – um reflects how they feel about themso themselves internally. If you feel like shit about yourself, you're going to surround yourself with shit. You're going to be okay with shitty people. You're going to be okay with a shitty salary. You're going to be okay with shitty things and shitty this. I mean, just fill in the blank. But if you start to do the work and work on yourself and sacrifice time, sacrifice like initially winning in life to, to take a pause and say, okay, like I need to work on myself. You win long term. And when it comes to inner circle, what I've learned is you feel more alone. For people who are worried about loneliness, you feel more alone hanging around the wrong people than you ever will intentionally taking some time to hang out by yourself. Because if you do it right. If you do it right. Because otherwise you'd be lonely. Yeah. There's people out there lonely because they're by themselves. Right. And they're not doing the work to build their self-confidence and self-esteem so that they can feel good about who they really are on the inside, change their mindset 
and have the courage to go out and meet new people. You know, and that's what it takes. And it's it can be challenging. I get it, but I think when did you get the the cahoots? The old cahoots to say, hey, wait a minute. I'm <laughs> likable. When I was in jail, man, my my cellmate, um, who was like a beast, he was a more jacked version of Brad Pitt from Fight Club. Did it's they call of... him double A? <laughs> no. No. I was in jail with this big old dude named Double A. Really? Yeah, I didn't know why they called him Double A. I thought maybe that's where you go to get the batteries. You know, <laughs> if you run out of batteries for yeah. your for your electronics but you know one night they called lights out and within five minutes i knew why they were why they called him double a because i was like hey hey <laughs> that's fine well no mine i he was asking me about my story and i kept bitching i was blaming my parents for the divorce i was blaming my friends for picking on me or blaming kids blaming for the world blaming everybody but me yep and he was just like quit being a bitch and i'm like it shook me because in those moments I think human nature for a lot of people is they they want to get told what they want to hear, not what they need to hear. And I got what I needed to hear in the right moment because I was like, well, what do you mean? He's like, you're blaming every single person for your problems but yourself. He's like, did anybody force you to do drugs? And I'm like, no. He's like, did anybody force you to sell drugs? Anybody force you? Kept naming all the things that I had done. He's like, he's like there's plenty of people that went through what you went through and are not in jail. And I'm like, yep. And he's like, you got two choices, man. So you can be a man, look yourself in the mirror and say, you got yourself here and it's up to you to change and make the right choices. Or you can go be a bitch, go cry in the corner, say, woe is me and blame everybody for your problems. And like, you chose bitch? No, I oh. chose to be a what? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know what story you read. No. Um, and yeah, I would, but, but, but chose bitch. Yeah, being called a you know when you're the bit when you're a bitch in jail, it's not a good look, no. right? Or in life. So so did you? You didn't write the book by now. Then no, because I had. Yeah, but you could have you could have sold us on you know, and I was I was in jail pondering on a daily basis, just reflecting on the things I had done wrong, and something just welled up in me to to write a book and share that so people wouldn't follow in my footsteps. No. So by the time I left jail, I had three books. That'd be a lie. That wouldn't be that wouldn't be getting real, right? I <laughs> was it sound good. It, it sounded great. But the cooler thing I think for me was my cellmate was like, all right, I was want what? you to, my cellmate was like, I want you to start working out with me. And I'm like, bullshit. I'd never formally worked out until that point. I was like fifty pounds heavier. You still know your celly? Um, we had gone back and forth, um, through like different lines of communication. And I actually worked out with him a few times when I got out, but he's kind of, I think he's gone down. I don't know where he is now. What's gone down mean? I mean, I don't, I don't know where he is. We kind of lost touch. I think he might've gone back in a couple of times. Why? Why would you think that? I, I just, I think I knew from certain people. So, so that's heard what that. you heard, you mean? Yeah. That's what the word was. So, um, but why'd you guys... And, you know, break up. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't break up. I just think we just lost touch. I think sometimes when. Well, then you weren't that close. He was just, he was just like, you make, you're making it sound like your celly saved your life. Well. If this guy saved your life and convinced you to be a man and convinced you to fucking snap out of your shit. Like, how do you still not talk to the dude? Sounds I, like he was pretty ec instrumental. He was, and I tried, but I think sometimes when people go down a darker path for themselves. So what you're saying is he just was heading down a different path. Yeah, it's hard for him. It's hard when I'm going another way and me trying to get a toll. When you're in that like low of a spot, sometimes you, there's shame. There's people that are like feeling like crap and they don't have that confidence in themselves to. So you had to make the tough choice. Yeah, but even now, like I, I would, I want to get him on my podcast. I really do. I want, I want Can him you reach him. I've tried a couple. Maybe of times. he listens to my podcast. Maybe, dude. I'm sure a lot of freaking cool motherfuckers listen to my podcast. Especially when it's called dropping bombs. Well, and it's because it's just a cool podcast. Bro. It is. Everyone that listens to it should do me a favor and just share it out, tag it on social media. Let's like double the exposure. It should be like in the top of all podcasts, in my opinion. But I'm biased. I, think I bring on guests from all kinds, dude. Like everyone will be like, you know, well, why? How do you get on there? Doug got on there. Well, number one, Doug has a podcast. He invited me on his podcast, common courtesy, regardless of, oh, you invite him back. So you starting a podcast is getting you exposed to hundreds of thousands of people. What are you going to do with that exposure, Doug? Uh, 
Well, I think the most important thing that I'm really trying to work on right now with people is, and I think I've hinted at this, is like helping people use adversity to their advantage. How are you going to do that? By... But more importantly, how are you going to take advantage that hundreds of thousands of people are going to be listening to this episode saying, old Doug Bobst. How are you going to take advantage of that? Um, I'm hopefully going to be create, continue to create good content on my channels. To what end? What do you mean to what end? For what, for what purpose? So to, to help people to, to show that this guy's a cool dude. He's real. He went through, he was a knucklehead growing up, was a victim and the, his victimhood got him incarcerated. And he took that moment in his life and used it to his advantage to become better. And now I'm sh I'm sharing a lot of the lessons and messages that I've learned through the years to help people not make the same mistakes that I did. Help you get or help them get better. Help them get better. What define better? Like where were you before and where are you now? Mm, I mean, before, like in that moment. Give me a contrast. All right. So how much money were you making when you were drug dealing? I was not making any because all of my profits were going up my nose or to strippers at strip clubs. I know, but you were making money drug dealing, no? Yeah, I was making money. How much? Thousands of dollars a week. Are you making thousands a week now? Um, no, not now, not not since COVID, but before I was doing okay. Doing what? Personal training? Training, yeah. Dude, you can do that shit online, by the way. No, I know. I have some clients online. I know, but you ever heard of King Keto? Uh-uh. I'd look him up because, I mean, he helps people personal trainers mainly like get online clients where you have a thousand people you're training. Cause really all you're doing is making them workout plans and you know, it's all on demand. It's crazy. But anyway, the reason I'm going back and forth, like I thought you were going to say yes, like fuck yeah. Now I'm making millions. But when there's five gauges that, that I think exist that will unstick anybody in any journey, the mindset, cause it's usually your mindset. If that's not the problem, look at the map. The map is, do you know where you're going? Have you gotten clarity on where you want to be? What does it look like? Can you visualize it? If not, your map's fucked up. Okay. Three is your motion, right? What habits, actions are you taking? The motions that you're taking will determine whether you're moving towards or away. Then the measurements, how, what are you measuring? If you're not measuring the right things, you're not managing the right things, you're, it's, it's blurry. And then the money gauge. Now, normally, yes, dear. What you doing? Oh, nothing. Just taping a podcast with Doug Bobst. Oh, lovely. Well, I won't keep you then. All righty. Call me when you're done. All righty. Love you. Love you. I always answer my wife's call no matter what because, like, something could be wrong. I've heard you say that, and I, I, I respect you for that. I know, but, like, sometimes I'm like, oh, <laughs> but then I just can't not fucking answer it. So, so it. You know, I, is there something wrong? I want to know right now. Yeah. Now, back to Doug Bobst. So what was and I by like? the way, you guys, social media at Doug Bobst, B-O-P-S-T, uh, DougBobst.com is his website. And again, I mean, Doug, if I was going to give these guys a summary of, of, you know, what you can help them with, you you were heading down a wrong path and you and you figured out that it was stupid and you figured out how to start heading the other direction. Right. And it started with my choices. And the reason I bring up the situation with my cellmate is because fitness was the biggest catalyst for my transformation. And you were you used to be fat? I was fat. I was, I could have been a model for Pillsbury. Do you have pictures? Yeah, there's pictures. You should, I should start editing and, and like send me, send my producers pictures. And, <laughs> and, you know, we'll put them up at the, for the episode. Yeah, I'll send you some, I'll send you guys some pictures. Only if they're drastic though. It's pretty, I, I think, I, it, I, you know, I, I had one guy say, you know, lost a ton of weight, changed everything. And I, and I like, before and after wasn't that different. Yeah. So it's like, were you just like this big old freaking, like I wouldn't even recognize you? I would say that most people look at my before and after and they see a substantial difference. Yeah. So the diet changed, you started working out in prison? Yeah, so my cellmate was like, I'm going to- What's his name? Uh, Eric. We don't, we don't want to give his name? Well, he's, I mean, he's in my book. Let's so. say E-Dog. E-Dog. Oh, E-Dog was there, okay? E-Dog e e got you off your ass, said, dude, come on, quit feeling sorry for yourself. You're a fucking punk. Quit acting like a bitch. And so that conversation, after the conversation- Hold about, on, let okay, me clarify. Yeah. And started working out with you. Yes. Okay. So dude, like that right there is 
if someone asks me, an element to success. So you, you, you found one element of success, you started applying it consistently, and you, and you got pushed and held accountable by E-Dog. By E-Dog, and I went down and do my first push-up and couldn't do a push-up, could do one for so my you knees. you were weak. I was weak, and I said, why can't but I do But you had the dimple in the chin. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why can't I do a push-up? He's like, because you're freaking fat. And I'm like, what do you mean? You know, I was like, so like terrified of that word. He's like, I'm not going to sugarcoat things, Doug. He's like, you're fat. You got belly fat that you got a weak core and you can't hold yourself up to do a push up, So you're going to collapse. And that, that, that really shamed you, guilted you into working out. I got, yeah. I mean, maybe that's the, the that's the that mindset. That is what happened. Right. But I also was just, but, but, but people listening might be like, well, Brian, that's a rude way to say it. Guys, if, if we just stop cutting the fucking stupidity like in other words what worked what worked is he told you and you know what you could say well i realized you did realize and that's the thing that's what tells us like the 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 guilt and the shame is used to fucking fuel the consistency the action and that's what everyone needs to understand like for example sometimes i'll get fucking fat and 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 i don't really care why i'm married i really don't care and like but neck 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 next thing you know my pants aren't fitting very well. It's uncomfortable putting on certain pairs of pants, right? You ever get to that level? Like I haven't. It, like, in a like, while. I haven't since I was younger. But. Okay, but again, anybody yo-yo dieting yeah. knows what I'm talking about. Like, there's certain pants that fit better, and then pretty soon those pants are tight too. Well, that means it's time to fucking look at yourself. That's what the, I use the pants for. I haven't been in those pants in a long time because I found discipline. Sounds like you found discipline. I did because when I collapsed and couldn't do a push up, it inspired me that I needed to change something. And then I, I, I one push up led to two push ups, led to yep. three. And then he trained me in there every single day. Is this what this book's about? Felony to fitness? Yeah. And it's about my, I guess, my childhood. And, and what I wanted people to understand is I blamed my childhood for most of my life. Why? What happened in your childhood? Well, my parents got divorced. Um, I Everyone's guess. Everyone's does. Right. But I mean, back, I mean, back then, I guess, and I was, a, I was a victim. So my mindset then is different than it <laughs> hey, is now. Hey, right. So that, that's well, what happened right there, brother. So you when I'm discovered something. So when I'm explaining this now, it wasn't that your parents were divorced, right? I mean, I guess I was a victim of my, uh, of, of my circumstances. That's what people need to hear folks. And blaming. If you, if you, if you think you're a victim, that's what was happening to Doug. Exactly. And I was blaming everybody for my problems. And dude, and by the way, just so everyone thinks, man, you're being mean to Doug. I'm using Doug as an example. I was the same as Doug. Yeah. I did it too. Everybody does it, dude. Yeah, yeah. Everybody does. Like you said, your parents were divorced. My parents were divorced. Okay. Someone will be thinking, fuck, my dad wasn't even uh, around. Like you'll, you'll, you'll be laughed at with, I got divorced, but you won't get laughed at when you say I was the fucking victim. And I didn't realize I was the victim because I didn't realize I was the victim when I was the victim either. Right. And I guess my point was, and the reason I included that was to show how I was a victim of my circumstances yep. and made choices to reflect that. And it wasn't until I stopped being a victim and owned my choices that my life changed. But did, well, that, that was the catalyst. So was that by accident or did someone coach you? Was that E-Dog helping you? That was E-Dog. No parents? No. no parental guidance? No. Where's your parents right now? Uh, my mom is in Florida, and my dad is about to move to Florida. Well, everybody is. I know, right? Florida, Nashville. Dave DeSantis Austin. is the only one down there running a fucking state <laughs> like it's its own country, which is what all states should do, if you ask me. Like, listen, if you don't like the state you live in, move to another state. I think state need to deal with the rules, just like DeSantis is doing. Yeah. And, and, and just run. Like right now, all those ships that are stacked up in California. I know, I DeSantis heard about that. said... Come on around to Florida. <laughs> Our ports are open. That's what we should be doing in California. But anyway, I digress. Let's go back to Doug Bobst. So you literally uh, recognize that you're a victim. You said, I made a choice. But that's another key that you did. Made a choice to want to change. I could have sat there in my cell. No one else could have changed you, bro. No, I could have sat there and complained and just said, woe is me and just done no exercise. Which people do. Right. A lot of people do. And it's not that they say, woe is me. They're just lazy. Like, I, you know, I got to admit, I, you know, I prefer not to exercise. I prefer not to exercise. Yeah. I mean, but, but I have to. Why? Because I prefer the results of exercise over not exercising. You see what I'm saying? Most people don't work. Most people don't work out 
most people, you know, they, they, it's not like they work out because they love exercise. Most people work out because of how they feel afterwards, well, right? It's, you know, precisely. It's the result. It's the result. And it's the keeping the commitments you make to yourself. And it's, there's the difference between most people. Most people, they don't want to pay the price. They just want to complain about not having the result. And then, yeah, and it's, that's the easy way out. No, that's the hard way out, bro. Well, I mean, long, yeah. I mean, I guess initially, yeah, for them, it's the easy. Not initially. Well, I mean, long, long term. term, they're fucking themselves hard. Oh, for sure. By skipping the work and just staying broke and unsuccessful and depressed, that's, that's the yeah. harder way to go. For sure, yeah. No, long then term, just yeah. Do yeah. a little exercise. Yeah. Start doing what you tell. Start doing what you say. Start hanging around smarter, better, brighter people. Start reading books. Start being uncomfortable. I tell you, yesterday morning, I don't want to. Well, I, I went, 20 years later, they freaking die, dude. And like you said, your buddy, whoever's not doing so well or went right. down the wrong path or what, like, like you go to a 40 year reunion, a 60 year high school reunion, you start to see people. So-and-so's dead. So-and-so's dead. It starts to happen around my age, you know, 50. So I'm 52. How old are you? I just turned 34 yesterday. Yeah. So you got a while, but dude, 52 years old, you know, people start dying. People start finding out they have something, you know, it's like not the best of years, unless your perspective is it is, dude, it's the best ever. Now, again, do I wish I was 30? Well, sure. Why? Because well, I just have all that youth and vitality with this knowledge. Shit. <laughs> but guess what? I don't feel any different. Right. I literally feel the same as I did when I was 30 years old. Energy, everything. I don't ache. I have no back pain. Like I'm not... Right. I'm not 52 chronologic or other than chronologically mentally or otherwise. I'm still juvenile as a matter of fact. Like we play jokes. Do you? Yeah. So you get up every day. What's your life like? You do, you do a little personal training here and there. I thought you were richer than shit. You're not richer than shit yet. How are you going to get richer than shit, Doug? Do you even want to be richer than shit? I do. I mean, I want to make really How good. How are you going to get richer than shit? Well, I, I, I think that I have a gift in public speaking, I've spoken before where? high school specifically. Where are you? I know, but where do you, where do you, you just said you think you have a gift public speaking, but you haven't public spoke since high school? No, no, no. Two high schools. I, I've spoke before the pandemic to high schools. I spoke How to- How many? Can we see you on YouTube? You can see there's a YouTube of me speaking to a high school in Texas. One? Yeah. And then there's a testimony. How do you plan on getting, you know, speaking gigs if nobody can see you speaking? That's so that my, my goal is I, I want to get like a speaker's reel filmed. Well, then do you know what you'd have to do? Get, get booked speaking and then hire somebody to film it. Right. So how do you get booked speaking if you don't have a speaker's reel? It's hard. I mean, and, and, I mean, and I guess a lot of what I've done already has been through referrals. Like I how spoke much to are the, you going to charge for your, for your keynote. I mean, my goal is eventually to be able to charge 10 grand. 10 G's. That's your goal. Or that's your phase one goal. It's like phase one. I mean, right uh, now I'm that's better. Come out. I've been getting coach Doug right up. <laughs> I've been getting anywhere between like one and two thousand for a speaking gig. You know why? Because that's what I feel I'm worth. Well, ultimately, yeah. Right. But do you know why else? Experience? No, because that's what you asked for. Oh yeah. What'd you ask for? Uh that that, that price. Right. See um, what I'm saying? Yeah. Why are you asking for so low, bro? I'll tell you why, what you said first, because you don't think you're worth it. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I, part of what I'm trying to continue to work on now, if I'm being honest. Aren't we? Right. Thought we established <laughs> yeah. that. What other reason you on here for, Bopes? <laughs> uh, is, is getting out of that mindset where I have to be in something for a long time to be considered like an expert. Well, I would, what'd you say? You got to get out of the mindset that you need to, to be an expert. Yeah. I mean, for somebody who's maybe only spoke, if I say I've spoken like well, then, 10 then, times, then what it does is you just don't, you just admit that you're, that you're not an experienced public speaker. It doesn't mean you're not a talented one. Doesn't mean you're not good. It just means you haven't done a lot of it. Right. So you, so you can't necessarily be an expert at it. You can be really talented and good at it naturally, but you're not an expert public speaker. Is that what you're going to try to sell people? No, you no, no. Become no. an expert where down the road someone else is saying, dude, Doug fucking Bopes is an unbelievable speaker. Well, no, I and, I'm, the, and the way you do that is massive people see you speak. 
Like right now, go look up a dude, Ed Milet. You know Ed Milet? I know Ed Milet, yeah. Okay, he's a great speaker. Awesome speaker. He spends 30 hours coming up with the material and pace it and practice it. And, you know, even backstage, you know, I see him pacing and, you know, he, he wants left alone right before he's about to go up. He don't, he ain't talking. He's, he's pacing and getting in the state. That's a, that's a real professional speaker. Who's good at it. Ask Ed, was it always that way? Cause it was not. Right. So my, I guess my point was, I, my belief is that I have to have more experience speaking to charge more money was what I was trying to say. Like, I know I'm, I'm you still believe that. I mean, after talking to you now, well, dude, I mean, it doesn't matter what you, what I say, I would have told you Crocs isn't going to work. Like right. if you'd have brought me Crocs idea, I would have said, bro, nobody's going to buy fucking rubber clogs. Okay. <laughs> Give it up. Right. And I would have been dead wrong. So don't listen to me. But what I'm trying to tell you, you is when I said, what do you want to do? You said you want to be a speaker or no, you said you had a really, uh, you were I talented think- at speaking. I think I'm a time talented at speaking and relating. That's all you got to say. And then boom, how do you start showing the world? You don't charge, dude. If you can get a couple grand, get a couple grand. But if you can get a couple grand, why couldn't you get 10? Like if someone's going to ask you how much, they're interested. I'm not going to ask you how much would you charge me to come speak at my event. You know what I'd say? I'd say, Doug, how much would you pay me to let you speak to my fucking people? Right. And if you were smart, you'd say, well, a piece of whatever I get from doing it. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you'd be prepared, which I don't think you are. Otherwise, when I said, hey, how are you going to leverage 200,000 people listening to you right now? How are you going to monetize that? You just said, well, Brad, I'm glad you asked. Thanks for serving that up. Folks, I've got a program. But I'll say it for him. I think Doug has learned some fresh lessons, even though you learned them a while back. And I think Doug can help. 85% 85% of the country. Like, I don't know if you're the guy that helps, you know, eight figure entrepreneurs get to nine and 10 figures. That's not me. No. <laughs> right. You're not even making. Well, I, yeah, it's, I, I'd be, I would, I would be a so fraud. So to say you were, right, but that's, that's where I'm going. So like that, if you were sitting here trying to sell people, I'm going to teach you how to go from eight to nine, I'd probably be fucking with you because I'd be like in my head, dude, you haven't even got to eight. How are you going to teach me to go from eight to nine? So at the end of the day, what can you teach people? Because when you go speak, you have to have a topic, bro. You have to have a story, and you've got that. Right. So now you have to own the story. You have to walk in confidence, meaning when someone grills you, do you, you don't even fucking flinch. Why? Because you know it inside and out. Why? Because you believe it. You're certain, you're certain of it. You could argue, and it didn't matter who you argued with. You could be fucking, who's your hero? Tony Robbins? Like, who's your hero in this space? You know, Dr. Drew? Like, who's your hero? My hero? Yeah, I mean, you like somebody speaking style. Who is it? I mean, Ed's a good, it's a okay, great so speaker. So Ed Milet. If you look at Ed Milet and you're like, wow, one day I'm going to be like that. Dude, you could probably do that now if you went out and if you went over and found out, Ed, what are you doing? And Ed would go, well, I'm doing this, 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 this. And then you emulate that. 90% chance you'll be able to do it too. Right. 10% chance Fucking Ed is just an unbelievably blessed and talented individual, and nothing he can ever say and do will allow you to see just how he becomes that. Just like a bodybuilder, you know? A lot of people see these bodybuilders like, oh, I wish I could look like that. Dude, I'll bet you you eat what they eat, and you lift what they lift, and you do what they do. You're going to be real close to what they are. I've done that before. Sure. It's a freaking fact. It's hard. It's a... So at the end of the day, I'm trying to give the audio or, or the listeners audio and video, visual. They can see your ass now too. But I want to give them like kind of a where I would go if I were listening to this and I was like, you know, who's Doug Bobst? Well, I think Doug is the dude that will teach somebody that still feels a little stuck how to get unstuck and start heading in the right direction. Right, exactly. And you don't charge very much. No, and to be honest, I mean, again, to say to be honest. <laughs> As opposed to bullshitting me? When I come on podcasts, it's a, to me, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for you having me on or anybody having me on a show. And Especially it's, me, Doug. Of course. And it's Why? like- Why? Because you're the man. No, because hundreds of thousands <laughs> of new listeners are going to come flooding in. <laughs> 
to your podcast. So I don't really get on and just try and sell stuff because to me, I, and I'm, I'm not saying that people are wrong for you don't doing have that. nothing to sell, do you? Well, and I, I mean, I have nothing to sell other than my, my books and if oh. people- you got books? I got three books. Oh, yeah. You wrote them in prison, didn't you? No. <laughs> that would have been cool, right? <laughs> but where yeah. do you get, hey, by the way, where do people get the books if they want to read these books? Felony to fitness to free. So if you're a felon right now and you want to get fit and free, that, that book will tell you how to do it. Yeah. Then you got the, the heart of recovery. Yeah. That's how you get to the heart of it, I imagine. Yeah. I interviewed 50 people from all walks of life on how they beat addiction. Different paths, not addiction just, like drug addiction, alcohol addiction, yeah, sex addiction, yeah, any addiction. See, why would anyone want to get rid of that one? What sex addiction? I mean, I think it can just dis- can depending on the well, situation, it can. Dis- I suppose it could. I'm right? not. I'm not addicted to sex, but sounds like one that wouldn't be a bad thing. You hump a lot. <laughs> Do I? No, no. <laughs> like that's the addiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, the addiction. I, yeah, and I think they, they want to have a lot of sex. Like, what's wrong with that? Anyway. Faith, family, and fitness. That's a good one. The three Fs. The three Fs, man. What's your faith, Doug? I'm a Christian. Mm. Haven't always been one, though. No? What were you before? I was uh, somebody who thought I was going straight to hell. What's that? <laughs> For Satan. Like Catholic? Uh, yeah. I mean, I grew up old school Greek Orthodox, and I was I, my idea was- if Greek you, Orthodox? Yeah. Dude, would it be ironic that one day you find out that's the right one? Uh Maybe, but right now I'm kind of comfortable with the non-denominational route. Well, well again, non-denominational is one thing. So you, what, what are you saying when you say you're a Christian? That I believe in Jesus. Do you know his real name? Jesus Christ. No, that's not his name. Um, that's a fact. Did you know that? Emmanuel? No. <laughs> God, people who are listening to this or are Christians are like, this guy's a moron. No, they're not. No. A lot of them start listening and going, holy moly, he's correct. People start to realize, damn, I didn't know Brad was a freaking theo- theologian. So what's his real name? Yashua is what his name was. Hmm. That's a fact. Like Yashua. J-E-S. Now, some people say Yeshua. It's Yashua. And if, it, and, if it, and if his name translated to today, it'd be Joshua. Oh, okay. Joshua Christ. People say, well, then why was his name Jesus? Why did we name him Jesus? Well, we didn't. That wasn't his name. His name was Yahshua. And after he died is when Jesus was created. Now, Jesus was created because they were translating it to Greek, and there was no male deity that could be described without making sure that there was an S on the end of their name. Like back then... All men's name had an S on the end. And Yahshua did not. And they've never even heard of that name anyway. And so it was changed to Aesus, I-E-S-O-S, Aesus, which they just called him Aesus to, to, to try and get all of the other religions, the mythologists, the sun, I mean, the sun worshipers, the 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 Greek mythologists, the the uh, well, the Jews weren't uh, uh, invited back then, but you know, Yahshua was Jewish. Mm. You know that? Yes. Of course, everyone knows that. Yes. Okay, he was a Jew, correct? Right. Do Jews celebrate or 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 like when he gave worship? Did he do it on Sunday? Uh, when do when do the the Jewish faith usually? I think Saturday is right. Exactly. So Yahshua went on Saturday. Why are we going on Sunday? So is that like the man-made religion part? Well, do you know why we go on Sunday? No. And by the way, Sunday, what day is it? Sunday. The sun worshipers. Mm -hmm. So a day named after another God is when we're going to, you know, give thanks to that one. I don't know, man. It starts to sound a little fishy. So you start doing your little research and you start to realize, oh, people have thrown some trickery along the way. And part of the trickery is getting us not to know things. Like, for example, according to the Ten Commandments, one commandment, okay, is don't forget the Sabbath. Right. What's the Sabbath? It's, it's Sunday, right? No. Saturday? No. Isn't the Sabbath like a day of... The Sabbath is the seventh day. The seventh day. Oh. So every seven days... If you went by a, 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 a lunar calendar, 
you'd have it on, it would fall on different days. The Gregorian calendar, which was introduced way after Yahshua's passing, didn't take into account the Sabbath. It, it literally was created to get you to not know which day was the Sabbath day. The Gregorian calendar. Look it up. Who, who authored that and why? Mm. It, was, it was theoretically so, you know, this new way of doing it. But guess what the real reason supposedly was? Why? To get all the people that were honoring the Sabbath to not remember which day was the Sabbath. So they went to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday in this succession thing. And that's not how the freaking sun and the moon and the stars do their thing. The original calendar was the, was the sun going up and the sun coming down. That was the calendar. And seven days later is this day. Well, a, a Gregorian calendar, you know, changes it to where now it's like, oh, shit, it's a little bit different. Anyway, I don't want to get into studies. Let's call them Bible studies. But I'm glad you're a man of faith. Yeah. And it, again, it was another stepping stone in my life where. So before you weren't, you didn't believe in it or you just you just didn't care. I was a victim. So I've done so no, so everything the world was against me for and up until I was 21 in jail, right? So I was like if God's real and he's about love, then why this, why that, why you know what I mean? Like the same bitch victim mindset that yeah. that I was um that I've been playing. And then I got out and I became really fit. Like I lost a bunch of weight, became a trainer, wrote my first book, and I thought that happiness and success in life like if you had asked me when I was a teenager, Doug, I could give you anything to make you happy as a teenager, what would it be? It would be to have a six pack, big arms and, and dating like hot chicks, right? But I got to, to a point in my life where I was doing that in my 20s and I still wasn't happy with myself. And I was like, well, why? And I still hadn't let go of that old version of myself and forgiven the, the stupid choices I made or forgiven my parents or forgiven like all these things in my life. And a client of mine was a pastor at a local church. And he was like, you should start coming to church with me. I was like, no, like I'm going to hell already and going to hell for this workout. <laughs> and I remember going to a mastermind retreat and I was in Florida and I, my life wasn't falling apart, but I was miserable. I was making good money as a trainer, written the book. I was fit. I'm like, why am I not happy? Why don't I have confidence? Why am I still looking in the mirror and seeing fat Doug? And my coach was like, you need some faith in your life, man. He's like, life's not all about you. And he's like, you also have to believe in something that's bigger than you, that, that's controlling what's going on. And he's like, and you have to get past a lot of these resentments. And I remember calling my client. I was like, I think I'm going to give this Jesus thing a try. And went into his office, you know, said the, the prayer that I believe that Jesus died for my sins and everything. And I started to I started to cry if I'm being honest. And I don't I don't know why. Holy Spirit touched you. Yeah, I have no I can't explain it. I remember getting out of there and calling my mom and apologizing for the first time of just some of the stuff that I did growing up. And then I started to slowly realize that I might not have been proud of the choices that I made, but God was because he used them to help for me to help myself get better and then to help other people. Dude. That's nice, huh? Yeah. And that's when I started to realize that the fitness couldn't be my entire life. Cause for a while, because I saw the effects of how much fitness helped me, that was like my thing. I'd be traveling on and like, that was your religion. Yeah. Back then, like if I was coming here to do an interview, I would have been traveling with chicken breasts and broccoli, like in my luggage frozen, you know, just, would you be, would you be like asking for the weights to pump up before the <laughs> camera turned on? No, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But I do, I do like exercise. Like I worked out this morning at the hotel before um, Dude, do you like wine? Are you married? I'm a bachelor. Bachelor. So you're a single dude looking to mingle. Yep. If there's one of my bomb squad members that are like, oh man, I love old Doug. You open to dating? Yeah, if it's the right fit. See, ladies, you just reach out to Doug Bobst. Yeah. How do they how do they find you? Dougbobst.com. Slide into my DMs. Now what if what if the bomb squad is how you meet your future bride? Then I'll let you orchestra. What's what? You, I'll let you officiate the wedding. When you say let me, see again. I'll ask you. I'll oh, ask yeah. you. You say let me. Like this. Someone the other day asked me. <laughs> I'll ask you. Well, someone the other day asked me. You know, uh, 
when you, if you went and found a job and you know put in an application and I yeah. said, I don't put in applications. I reply. <laughs> See if they if you get that mindset in life, folks. Like yeah. you know, obviously you got to put in an application. But my point is, is, if you just shift your perspective to start, you know, hearing like when you said, "I'll let you." See, my mind already recognized. Let me. Shit, you might my motherfucking need to pay me. <laughs> right. See what right. I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, why do I think like that? Well, because I at your wedding is a value to your wedding. Right. That's how people need to fucking think about themselves. True, true. And uh, by the way, if me being at your wedding helped me, like, like you know, oh, I'm I'm front and center at Brad Pitt and Angelina's wedding, you know, who's this guy, you know, then it's the opposite. Sometimes you have to humble yourself, which, again, I don't believe in humility. I, I, I When I read the definition, it means that you can – can withstand trouble, delay, challenges, and without being upset. I think in some cases that is really valuable, but in some cases it costs you because people people use it as a crutch to relax. So at the end of the day, it's like, you know, oh, things take time, Doug. Don't worry about it. Things take time. You know, but you want to get abs and you're crying tomorrow, I'd tell you have some fucking patience, bro. It takes longer than that yeah. because nobody can do it. But what one man can do, another man can do. So once people realize that, it's like, okay, wait a minute. If Doug was heading down the wrong road, and you were, and he turned himself around, so can I. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, you brought up a good point. Like you asked me if I researched my guests, and the reason I do is because a lot of people I'm bringing on, it's more valuable for me to have the guest on. Yeah, you're interviewing them for yourself. Yeah, and, and a lot which of is what I, Which is what I said on that episode, remember? Right, but it's also I like busted you. Your cold <laughs> busted you. So if I'm gonna have somebody on, that I broke you down psychologically. No, you didn't. <laughs> I, it was good. It was I was very a very well received episode. But if if I'm having somebody on who's further along the path than me, I think the respectful thing to do is to show that I value their time, since their time is probably worth more than mine in that moment. Because sure it is. Be, right, because of the work that you've put in yeah, see, in your you were, life, you, you were all, you were all, uh, you know, you didn't really want to say it like that. Why? Because you think society will judge you if you think you're less than this person or that person. And I think that's a problem. You know, I think that's a problem. Yeah, it is a problem right. because again, you shouldn't worry about what the fuck society thinks of you. It, it's what you think that matters. So, like for example, if 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 Elon Musk just said, "Brad, I'll get on your podcast," but right, it's going to be right in the middle of fucking Doug's episode, I'd say, Doug, we're going to have to stop this fucking thing real quick. <laughs> right? And I'd understand. But it, I don't give a fuck if you understood or not. That's the whole point. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. dude, I'm, I'm, I'm going to worry about Brad Lee. Why? Because, dude, no one else will if I don't. Right. So once people realize that, you got to worry about Doug, bro. True. And, and you look out for Doug. Now, someone says, that's selfish. No. That's what we've been taught. It's not selfish. You can still be kind and understand that you need to preserve you at the highest level. Meaning, I always tell people, you want to you want to meet someone that can change your life and literally make you a multimillionaire? They're like, yeah. Okay, I'm going to introduce you to them. I want you to go into the bathroom, make sure it's empty, shut the door, and then look around. And then when you see that individual, I want you to be really nice to them. I want you to freaking... Build a relationship. I want you to respect that son of a bitch. Get as close to you can. Make him your best fucking friend where nobody can come between you and him. Because that's the son of a bitch that'll make you rich, dude. And that's the same one that'll keep you from being rich. So, like, don't worry about who's outside of that bathroom. Who gives a fuck who's outside of that bathroom? That's the son of a bitch looking at you. That, yeah. that you need to be best friends with. That's the, that's the dude you want to kiss his ass, okay? You want to fucking bow down, kiss his ass, love him is as, as fucking, you know, weird as that sounds, you know, or her if it's a girl doing this. But once you realize you're like, well, that makes sense. Okay, well, once you get to that, I call it level of enlightenment. Like, oh, okay, that's not selfish, to respect myself, that's not selfish. To to think that I'm important, because I am, I'm the only one not leaving me, right? Right. Your wife could leave you, dude. Oh, you're not married. <laughs> but like, dude, friends leave, people leave, aunts leave, parents leave, everybody leaves. Nobody has ever left themselves. 
So who's more important? Yourself, bro. So go build that relationship with yourself and continue to build it because it's not an overnight thing. And then pretty soon you get more and more, and then pretty soon your your knowledge becomes what we call <clears throat> wisdom. Yeah. See, I'm reaching wisdom level. Yeah. Ten years from now, I'll probably fucking reach like oracle level. Like fucking people will travel miles to just hear my opinion on a subject. And so will you. The For question sure. is, is, will you die first? Because you're already on the right path. Right. So unless you die on accident or something happens, you're going to head there too. See, a lot of people also don't understand. There's people that, that, like Elon Musk, he's not better than me, dude. He's just ahead of me. Now, some people could go, no, he's better than you, and he's way more creative. I, I understand, but that those are subjective opinions. I would, I would say that, you know, because I, I mean, you give me a couple billion dollars access, I'll get us to the fucking Mars too. I'll build some rockets. That that shit's fun shit for kids, right? I'm a kid too. So if I just gave you billions of dollars, dude, could you not f hire pretty much anyone you want to build some fucking rockets and try to get to the fucking Mars, right? And build a colony. And by the way, I haven't seen any space shuttles fucking go there. I don't see any fucking cranes in the air on Mars. So he ain't really doing it. He's just talking about it, isn't he? Yeah. And look at all the momentum he's getting. Oh, wonderful. Now, again, most people are like, why are you hating on Elon? I'm not. I'm just, I'm, my point being is I just don't think he's any better than I am or you are for that matter. Because if I gave you billions of dollars, wouldn't and couldn't you do what he's doing? Right. Yeah, for sure. Get to Mars Build rocket ships? Okay, he's not doing it. He's hiring all the experts. Right. You know, Tesla, great idea. Make a good-looking car that runs on batteries. Dude, he saw a hole and he filled it. That's fucking great. I love the idea of, of, of cars. In, in the future, dude, there won't be gas cars. All electric. He changed fucking automobiles. Oh, my God, what, a, what an amazing individual. Yes, very creative, very fucking innovative. Aren't you... For sure. And I think you bring up a good, a really good point. And then a lot of people, you know, when they get into personal development, they think that they need to know their worth, know their value. And they assume that everybody's created equal. Right. And I we think might, we might be born that way, but we don't stay that way. And to your point, like if I were to say, if you were to, if, 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 if for some reason I was trying to get to speak at your, come to speak at your event, I'm not going to come up to you and say, this is, Hey, I want to, I wouldn't pitch you and say, Hey, this is what I charge because I know that it would be much more valuable for myself to be there than it would for you. Cause you could have, you know, anybody. Right. And, but if I knew that I it could be a valuable thing, I'd be like, all right, maybe I come, I'm just making this up, come volunteer for your event. Maybe I get like a 10 minute thing. And, and, but there's a lot of people that won't do that because they're their ego, their ego. And they're afraid of dropping their ego and saying, you know, like right now I need to like, just do something for free. I need to and, put the and, work and in. You know why they'll, 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 not drop their ego because they fear what other people think. Right. That's it. So if everyone just stops worrying about what other people think, they're going to freaking elevate to a whole nother level. Like just quit worrying about what other people think. Quit trying to factor in other people's opinion to make yours, like make your decisions. Yeah. I think if you don't develop your own identity for who you are, you you'll fill it with other people's stuff. Walk in certainty. Yeah. Doug, where can people find you? Come on. At Doug Bobes on Instagram. and then Doug Why should they find you? Tell them one more time. Why should people reach out and follow Doug? Because I help people use adversity to their advantage. I help people become the best version of themselves. I'm here to inspire you that you can make the most of your second chance. If you make poor decisions based on the circumstances that you lived in, like it's okay, but I just want people to know that it's up to you to change. Like you have two choices in life when adversity strikes. You can sit there, cry, say, woe is me and make choices that make that adversity worse. Mm -hmm. Or you can be aware of the situation, accept where you are and know that it's up to you to change that situation based on the choices that you make on a daily basis. So for me, that's fitness. For me, that's who I'm surrounding myself with. For me, it's habits, habits. That's what it comes down to. Your habits and choices will make or break you. My choices and habits broke me when I was younger. My habits and choices have made me who I am today.
Eh, you guys heard him. Hey, listen. Share this podcast out with your buddies. It's all I'm asking for. Why? It exposes us to more people. We shoot up the rankings, which exposes us to more people. And pretty soon, OBL is world famous. I'm Joe Rogan status in the podcast world. Come on, man. Share this motherfucker out. Uh, by the way, if you guys uh, are some of the ones requesting that I stop profanity, um, I am going to start a, a profanity-free podcast starting Neverwary 3rd. Keep an eye out. Till next time, keep it real. Dropping bombs with the real Bradley. Subscribe now.